Growing up during the 2000s with a PC at home was quite a joy for me. I got to experience a lot of my favorite games during that wonderful decade. A lot of people ranked their favorite years based on the released games and we had some really good ones. So to me 2002 is very special. Just pulling out the names of the games released during those 4 digits, memories rushed me and made me smile tremendously. Of course I'm not gonna list them and tell you why they still excite me when I just look at their cover because this isn't the title of the video. I want to talk about a game made by a small Czech studio called Illusion Softworks. They made a game that introduced me to a world I didn't know to exist back then. The world of the American Gangster. Welcome to the city of Lost Heaven. Welcome to Mafia. First thing first, we have to talk about presentation. Mafia runs on LS3D, a new engine that was specifically built for it. In a game released in 2002, it aged well. Granted, I'm not someone who would care much if it didn't. It's noticeable how old it is and you don't even have to look closely to see how low the textures are, but there are details around which I like seeing, even after all these years. For example, how well the cars have been modeled. They have this shine to them. To simulate the brand new metallic look of these heavy beasts, they also have a unique non-scripted car damage physics, which blew my mind back then. It looks like the metal bands where you strike it with a melee weapon. Or if you hit a utility pole, which would you look at that, it isn't as fragile as a matchstick. You can also shoot and burst tires. Break the windows and kill people through them. Other details such as bullets, shells dropping on the floor and not disappearing immediately, dropping a gun's magazine or the weapons themselves, they'll stay there for the reminder of the level. And who can forget the car's gouges getting a backlight during the night? While I'm a sucker for these kind of little features, we can't miss the surroundings. Artistically the game is set in the Great Depression and Illusion Softworks has done its homework. They have successfully created a fictional city from an old forgotten era. You have skyscrapers piercing the skies, big streets filled with shops and apartments and districts like Chinatown and Little Italy. But sadly it doesn't seem there are that many people on the streets which ultimately damages the big city aesthetic. And unfortunately because of the age of the engine there are some other negatives here. The first one is the shadows. They're kind of broken on the highest settings and even with the widescreen fixed by 13 AG I couldn't manage to fix them. A bummer but not a big deal, the game still looks fine without it and to be fair the shadows are not that impressive anyway. The other one is the car's body reflection during the night. The game uses static environment maps for reflections and because they use one which is during broad daylight it stands out and doesn't look that good. Alas, some things don't sound particularly good either. One of them is the voice acting. Here you go, hero. So, do you swing? What? Do you like dancing, music? I have a gramophone. It isn't always bad, it just likes delivering a bit of emotion in certain scenes. Today we're gonna visit a few places to collect some protection money two restaurants and a motel outside of town. Even though it has veteran actors. Thanks, I'd, I'd better go uh, to fix the car and so on. All right, I understand. Just think about it. And I hope it's clear that this matter is only between ourselves. You take care, kid. Voice acting was a new venture, something the developers had to experiment with because they didn't have years of experience they could learn from, but at least they excel everywhere else, starting with its great sound effects.
Weapons sound impactful and different from each other. But the highlight has to be the shell casing hitting the floor after being fired. Since cars are the primary transportation, each car not only handles differently but sounds different as well. Depending on the type of vehicle, you can even hear sometimes the carburetor some older ones have. Along the way to your destination, you'll be listening also to the tire squealing. Thankfully, overshadowed by the soundtrack. The original orchestral soundtrack done by Vladimir Shimunek is criminally fantastic. I've been listening to the main theme since the very first time I opened the game up. It is, without a doubt, one of my favorites. The other tracks appear in certain levels where the game requires a different kind of background music to illustrate either danger or highlight the action on the screen. We also have to talk about the licensed music, which by the way might not be present in your digital copy unless you download the restoration patch. And you better restore it because it's not the same without it. For obvious reasons I'm not gonna play the tracks, but I think they're excellent. They recreate the times beautifully and it's disappointing that they're missing from the overall package. What isn't missing is the classic gameplay. Initially, Mafia was considered to be a driving game, like a little forgotten open world franchise of the past called Driver. But along the way, Illusion Softworks decided to add the ability to get out of the car and fire weapons. So the game became a third person shooter as well. While there's plenty of bullet trading between you and the enemies, the majority of the time spent in Lost Heaven is behind the wheel. You get a marker on the map and it is up to you to find the best route by constantly checking it until you eventually memorize the streets. A lot of work went on refining the driving because the developers wanted to give us realistic handling. So they've put real technical information about cars and tried to figure out how these metal carriages would behave with real life physics in mind. And that's why cars are heavy and accelerate slowly. Most of them feel like driving a bag of potatoes, especially during cornering. But at least they gave you turn signals. But that doesn't help and you still slide around them unless you use your brakes wisely and early. So forget about short stopping distance if you're driving crazy fast and maniacally like me. You're most likely going to crash the 3 ton box into whatever is in front of you. Therefore I recommend the use of the oh so boring speed limiter. It's there for your convenience but also so that you don't get pulled by the police. Ah the fuss, the highlight of the driving sections in this glorious piece of time machine. Do you see that small radar on top left? You are the white rectangle, the green ones are the surrounding vehicles but what you're looking for are the blue ones. Those are the coppers and they hate a few things, speeding and running a red light. You do any of those things, especially around the patrol car, be prepared for a nuisance. They'll try to ram you off the road and with your driving a sack of rotten tomatoes, sometimes it's very hard to get away from them. Unless you're persistent like me or they see you waving your big pistol out of the window or hear you using it against anyone, you'll be okay because the only thing you will receive is a ticket. Driver, you've broken the law. 
I'll have to find you. Okay, officer. So here's the dough. I hope it won't happen again. But start blasting and be prepared for an army with a lot of firepower. I'm quite glad the police is this formidable. It not only makes the game a challenge, but you have to be smart where and when to use your arsenal. Of course, they aren't as fast as in some other games when it comes to backup, mainly because they don't have radios and must use the telephone boots for backup. So if you manage to kill your pursuers before that, you'll be completely free of any repercussions. During such chases, what's important is the camera. Now the driving one is excellent, you have plenty of options to choose from. I prefer the one furthest from the back for a big viewing angle. You can also rotate it to your whim. Things get a bit different when you get out of the car. The camera might feel zoomed a little too much. It feels as we are the observers, three feet tall behind Tommy, trying to see over his shoulder. But since the game doesn't offer a zoom for aiming, it appears it's done for that reason. The gunplay. Mafia doesn't give you the option of buying weapons, so you'll be getting our little friends from Vincenzo before the start of each mission. While you can pick whatever gun you find, each mission starts you with a different loadout. This isn't the case for the last few missions, where you will have the chance to visit Yellow Pit and pick your favorites. Sadly, you can only carry a limited amount, so choose wisely. In the beginning, we start small, with a melee weapon. For that we have the bat, for those with a wish for a broken rib or 24. Oh. Oh. While there are other melee weapons, you don't use them much because you have access to bullet firing ones soon after. And if you thought driving is difficult, wait to taste the recoil on these puppies. You got a few different handguns that behave decently, allowing you to kill enemies with their slow rate of fire, but they're still a great start for a massacre. There are three revolvers, one of which is the Magnum, and no, it's not my favorite. Not just because of the lack of ammo, but because of a certain holy grail we're going to talk about later. The fourth gun is a Colt 1911, which I use most of the time because it has great accuracy, recoil and damage. Next we have two shotguns, a sound of and a pump action one. And they're a great way to blast those who are trying to get you from up close. Just make a hole and walk right through them, figuratively of course. We have two rifles, one of them is with a scope for a specific mission, the other one is carried by some police officers and it's very powerful. But what I'm looking for is one thing in every mission, the Tommy gun. The trench broom is a pure masterpiece, with its 50 round drum magazine it will make you sigh in relief whenever you come across it. The recoil is a bit hard to control if you try to unload it fast, so what you wanna do sometimes with it is stop fire it, because then the weapon becomes highly accurate. Another reason is that enemies get staggered whenever you hit them with a bullet, and thus it makes the game a bit easier. Don't worry, you still have to replay missions. It doesn't make Mafia painlessly easy. Since I'm on the subject of difficulty, the game doesn't offer you a cover mechanic. Instead, you have to find something that works in your favor by hiding behind it and often using the crouch button. If you get stuck in a sticky situation, use the dodge roll by double tapping the directional buttons. It's a bit clunky, but works in some cases. One of the negatives I can think of is the AI. Although it hits very hard, sometimes they're kinda silly. They don't seek cover and after they'll shoot you from the open, so the devs decided to increase their numbers and position them in a ways you wouldn't expect. 
And here comes the second negative. There's no saving system, just checkpoints. I hate checkpoints. You can make games hard without this artificial way, with a proper saving system that includes quick saves. Since that's missing, some missions may feel more frustrating than they should. One of them in particular is the infamous racing one. I think it isn't as bad as most people remember it, but it can be frustrating because of the number of laps you have to make. And here, one mistake at the end can cost you since the car drives very slippery. I managed to beat it on the first try, even though I made several errors at the beginning, it was uneasy. But I can see the glaring issues. I think if you just drive carefully and watch the speed, you should be fine. Anything above normal though, I can only say that I praise your nerves of steel and you deserve a personal medal. Besides the one I just mentioned, the game offers quite a decent variety of missions that come in different difficulty levels, with interesting twists along the way which kept me interested for the ride once again. Especially after you beat the main storyline, you get the free ride extreme mode, where you have 19 really hard missions to complete with unique cars as a reward. But I rather not go into much detail, as I fear I might spoil some entertaining moments. And speaking of spoiling. One of the things that is timeless about Mafia is its story. Even by today's standards, I think it's well written and memorable. It's the right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world kind of story. About a couple of guys who decide what's right and wrong with a set of their own rules, disregarding the law, they take what belongs to them. It's very well structured and accompanied by an interesting cast of characters with different viewpoints and ultimate goals in life. While predominantly one goal, they all want money, just different amounts of them. Before we go through the story, I have to warn you there are gonna be spoilers, so if you wanna avoid them, buy the game, play it and come back. Or go here. I hope they chose the first option. The game opens up with the meeting of Detective Norman and Thomas Angelo, our protagonist who wants to rot on the infamous criminal organization he's been working for for the last few years. He used to be a cab driver who gets involuntarily dragged into a car chase by two members of the Salieri crime family, Polly and Sam, because they got ambushed by one of the rival gangs. Where to? Anywhere! Fast! I hope you're damn fast! Faster than Sam here was! I burned rubber out of there like a bat out of hell. He successfully escapes and they give him a parting gift. Mr. Salieri would like to thank you as well as myself and Polly. Initially, he's reluctant to accept the offer to join the Salieri's family because, as he puts it, It's better to be poor and alive than rich and dead, right? Tommy decides to continue his work as a cab driver and a few days later, during his break, fate catches up with him when a couple of Morello's thugs try to teach him a lesson. Jesus. We got you, you little rat. Good thing he happens to be close to Salieri's bar and after safely getting there, his outlook on life completely changes. So like I always say, better to die young and loaded. After being accepted into the family, here is where we meet a variety of compelling characters. Paulie and Sam are the two characters who feel the most fleshed out, since they are his partners in crime, who he will rely often on upon. Paulie is the friend who will have your back, where Sam, he is the guy who will stick to his boss no matter what. Frank is the Don's advisor and Tommy will bond with him, even break the code for at one point. Vincenzo, the armory keeper, Ralph, the innocent stuttering car mechanic, who teach Tommy how to pick lock cars, Luigi, the bartender and Tommy's future father-in-law after he marries his daughter Sarah, and Lucas, a care mechanic he will often be doing favors for, tempted by the sweet reward of a nice set of wheels. Well now I can't give it to you, but I can show you how to lift one and where. The majority of the story revolves around Salieri, who wants to slowly and determinately crush his rival Morello by sending you and your two buddies on many difficult missions. And during all of this, Tommy starts to realize that things aren't as easy as it seems, especially when it concerns people close to him. He is the one tasked to kill Frank after Salieri finds out his informant for the police. But Tommy can't pull the trigger, because as he says... 
Don't do to others what you wouldn't want them to do to you, or however they say it. After we take out Morello, things don't stop there for Salieri, as he starts trying to take out other people who are seemingly in his way. Even high profile politicians are on the chopping block. But what angers Tommy and Polly isn't that, but the fact that Salieri is using them and lies about a smuggling job. And it's definitely not rock candy. Those are diamonds, and a hell of a lot of them. So they decide to rob a bank. A mistake which they'll pay dearly for. Sam, who finds out about it, decides to stick by his boss, kills Polly and now is looking to finish the job. He confronts Tommy who saved him numerous times. I guess that counts for nothing. The fight is tough but Tommy prevails. He kills Sam and decides to testify against the Salieri family to try and escape the mark he has on his head. Finally, he finds peace and new life with his family. But some stories aren't meant for a happy ending. Mr. Angelo? Uh, yes? Mr. Salieri sends his regards. I didn't play Mafia for a long time, and replaying it recently reaffirmed my love for it. It's a game that was ahead of its time 20 years ago and still holds very well today. Back then it made a huge impression on me because of how well the world was crafted, with its details I still look at with amusement. It created my interest for the time period it was set in, and I think it's such a shame that there's so very few games taking place during those years, and it has so many unforgettable moments created either from joy, frustration, or straight out silliness. Yes, the realistic driving can be off-putting by some, the voice acting needs some work, and I certainly hate the lack of a save system, but I can't say anything bad about the rest. The gameplay is fun and challenging, albeit it doesn't give you a lot of variety and options in terms of different mission approaches, but it keeps you intrigued with its story, which is a mature and enthralling crime epic. Led by Tommy who is one of the most interesting protagonists to ever grace us in the pixel world because he is an ordinary man who is pushed into a different world by unfortunate circumstances. And although he becomes a cold-blooded murderer and criminal without remorse, he manages to keep some of his humanity intact. He's not someone I would want to be, not someone to be idolized, but to be an example of what not to become. It's a story about change that leads eventually to regret and wish for redemption. At least that's how the game spoke to me and it's why I love it so much. It certainly isn't a perfect game, but it sure is a great one. As I always say, it's better to love something with its flaws than to love something and pretend it's perfect.